So in this tutorial we're going to look at how to set up um, Adobe Photoshop to create images ready for use in the TriCaster. Obviously the first thing you want to do is to actually launch Photoshop and whether you're creating a new graphic or you want to take in um, a JPEG then you actually want to do this through Photoshop to ensure that you've got the correct dimensions and the correct color space as well. So to create a new document if you go up to File new and I've actually saved myself a preset here um, but to create it from scratch you want to go down to the film and video option and when you go in it's going to automatically load up the last one that you've selected um, so if you click on the size you'll notice there's a whole load of options down here um, which it's worth having a look through those for your editing either with Avid um, or if some of you are using Final Cut you'll notice some of the presets in there. The one we need to use for the TriCaster um, is actually this one down here HD TV 1080p. Um, ignore the frame rate um, obviously we're going to be creating stills although Photoshop can create um, moving image uh, we're using this one purely for stills so you want the HD TV 1080p 29.97 and this will give you the correct width, height and resolution. Um, a little bit further down you'll notice that there's a color profile option and the particular one you need to use I may have just gone off the bottom of the screen but the particular one you want to use for this is actually the HD TV and it's the Rec 709 and basically that will give the correct color space for your document. Um, you can either name your document here now um, or just press OK and you'll notice that this has given us uh, a new Photoshop document, it's given us our guides there so we've got our um, picture safe and also our title safe guides up um, and that's that one ready to go. Now if you wanted to create new graphics for your program then you want to work within this, try and adhere to the guides that are on the screen. If you wanted to take in another graphic um, there's a possibility that you're going to be working with a picture that's smaller than the broadcast size or that it's larger than the broadcast size. It's not very often that you'll get a graphic that's um, spot on to start off with. So I'm just going to go over to Finder and I've got a couple of images in here. Um, the first one I'm going to work with, this is an image of a gerbil I believe. So I'm just going to open this up with uh, Photoshop. And let's open it in a new tab. You can see here that's loaded the image up 100%. percent just going to tear off the tab and then I'm going to pick uh, the move tool. And all you need to do, oh that snapped it back on. Let's tear off that tab again, move it over. And all you need to do is with the layer selected is click and drag that layer into our new destination. Now it's coming up saying um, do we want to convert the colors um, to the destination document um, and we actually want to say uh, OK in that one. And that will mean that our graphic now is actually in a completely new color space. Now you notice that this image doesn't actually fill the screen whilst it was bigger in our previous screen that's a hundred percent of the image's size but our, our working space here is actually only displaying at sixty six percent yeah, through the method that we've just done through dragging and dropping the, um, the small picture of the gerbil in it actually displays it at a hundred percent of the size now what that means is if you were to start to um, resize this image it's actually making it larger than 100% which will start to increase um, pixelization um, of the image. So if I pop that in there you can start to see that some of the quality has really gone down so whilst the image is now bigger and will fill the screen um, it will look quite grainy um, in its quality. So with regards to this image it shouldn't be resized at all. That is the gerbil at 100% of its size. So we have another image, um, which this one is larger than our workspace. So again, if I select to open it with Photoshop, it's going to open it up in a new tab. It's going to slide that tab off. 
And again, the same procedure as the image that was too small, with making sure the background layer is selected of our image, dragging it across. Again, it's asking us, do we want to convert the color space? We say yes. And now you'll notice that our image is actually larger than our working space. Um, and with this one, we can actually scale it down if we want to. I mean, maybe that's the desired look you want. Um, however, if you want to scale it down, making sure um, you keep things in proportions, so there's no distorting of any aspect ratios. What you want to do is hold shift, click on one of the control points, and that will constrain um, your rescaling of the image. So bring that down, and that's pretty much the best that we're going to be able to get that image scaled down. So once we've got it the size we like, Double click to confirm that, and there is our image scaled down. Again, I'll just bring up our gerbil one just to remind you um, that any images that are actually smaller or come in looking like this, you shouldn't be scaling up. Um, maybe you just want to give um, a darker background um, just to blend it in. Um, and if something is larger, you can scale it down, but just make sure you hold down shift when you're dragging the corners to constrain um, the actual image scaling. Now, the other thing you may need to do uh, with your Photoshop document, if you set a background, so for example, if our hippopotamus here was going to be our background, is it may be that the image itself is actually too sharp. Um, you need to think of the context in which your actors are going to be interacting um, or showing off the background. And in most cases, you might actually need to add um, a slight blur to the background image. So to do this, what you need to do is select the layer that you want blurring. Um, if it's a whole a load of layers, probably the best thing to do would be to group them all into one layer, duplicate the layer, hide it, and then flatten the one that's left visible. And then you can affect just that one uh, layer. So with our layer selected, you simply go up to Filter, down to blur and the most simple one is the Gaussian blur option and straight away it comes up with the last setting that you've used and you can see ours was a one pixel blur and you can tweak it as much as you want blurring the background image so for this one we might want to put it sort of towards the two press OK and that's your background blur. So this will be done obviously to make your um, presenter um, sit more comfortably with the background in a slight defocus. Um, you don't want to do it too much um, obviously it might show up the keying then within the TriCaster um, but it's up to you to sort of to judge how much or how little of a blur you need to do to make it look as realistic as possible for the set you've designed. Now, whichever, whatever you've done with your Photoshop documents, the last thing you need to do is actually save. Um, there's a couple of things you want to do when you save. The first one is you want to actually save a master. Um, so, I'm just going to call this one Pro Master. When it comes to saving your file, um, you want to make sure that you go down to File and then it's Save As. This will then give you the different uh, format options that you can use. Um, and then the one you want to choose is JPEG. Um, not JPEG 2000, as this won't work properly in the TriCaster, but the standard JPEG. you notice that the file extension changes at the top. And when you come to name your file, um, there's actually a naming convention, which you'll be able to find this on the Victory site on Pru. Um, this is basically, there's so many um, files that you'll be handing in individually and also collectively as a group um, that you want to easily be able to identify whose file it is, what the file is, and then obviously tie that up then with the scripting as well. So the naming convention is uh, your initials, so mine will be a J. Then it's your student number. And then you want to go um, underscore. And for this particular one, the hippopotamus is actually going to be our background image. So for a background, we're having BG. 
And then lastly, at the end of that, you know, which one is it? Is it your first background, your second, your third? So this one is our first background. And then you press save. Then it will come up with some options there. And you want to make sure simply that the quality is set at 12, which is the largest maximum file size. And you can press OK on that. Now with our other image, we're actually using this um, as a picture um, that's going to come up on a screen. This is going to be hidden as part of the uh, set that we're going to be using. So for this one, I would choose File, Save As. And then again, name and convention, it's going to be AJ, student number, and then it's underscore, and this particular one is a picture, and it's PIC for pictures, and this is going to be my first picture. And again, this is going to be a standard JPEG. So we can press save on that one, and again, it wants to be set as 12 maximum quality, and press OK on that. Now you want to check how your files need to be delivered, so make sure you are checking your messages from Victory um, and from Gary as well. Um, you may be required to deliver your pictures and images on a USB stick, in which case it needs to be a FAT32 or a PC formatted memory stick. Unfortunately the Mac formatted ones cannot go into um, the TriCaster for ingesting um, or it may be that the files need to be dropped off in such other manner so make sure you check on that. If you have any problems with Photoshop or want any extra tutorials that can be arranged through the CCI Skill Centre down in Eldon and for any other um, questions pop into the TV studios and see Louise Appleby or come and see Alan Jennings in the Skill Centre.